It took me five years to really understand what the power of headless CMS is. Like everybody else, I thought it was just about taking off the head, taking off the presentation layer and creating an API on top of a content management system. That's what I thought. Well, actually, after the last five years, building Ampliance and building a headless CMS and then implementing it in real life situations, I've realized that there's far more to it than that. And there's a real superpower behind what headless CMS is. So if you want to work out how awesome a headless CMS can be, this is what this video is about, and I'm gonna take you through it. Welcome to Going Headless, I'm John Williams. Let's get to it. So the standard definition goes something like this. At the bottom of the CMS, you have your admin system where business users will enter content into the system. You have a body where the actual runtime of the CMS happens. That's the piece that actually gets the content and pushes it through into the head. And the head is the piece that actually presents the content. So that's your website. But in a headless CMS, what you do is you take off the presentation layer. You take off the head. So you're left with the ability to enter content into a repository and the body that then delivers the content, except instead of a head, you've got an API. And then that allows you to push it into any head, into multiple heads, whether that's a native application, a website, a voice application, or an IoT device. It basically allows you to de deploy content into any head because of the API. And that's a really good description. And then you've, you can go into a lot more depth of that, but it's only telling you half the story. The ability to deliver through an API is great, and it does give you that power to deliver to any head, but it's only half the story. So to help you understand that, I'm going to use a really simple analogy, one of a phone, a smartphone. So back in the day, when you wanted to make a call, you had a fixed line phone. I did at home. If I wanted to use the phone when I was a kid, I would have to go and talk to my parents and use the phone at home and make a call to my friends while my parents were actually still in the room. And that was the way it used to be. I mean, what the phone was doing is solving a communication problem. Anybody who had a phone could phone somebody else with a phone. And then the smartphone come along. And what, and what you could say is the smartphone is solving the same problem, except you can now phone anybody wherever you are in the world. You can carry the phone with you rather than have to go home. If you stuck with that, it is a good explanation of what a smartphone is, but you're losing half the story. Does it allow you to make calls and be completely mobile? Yes, it does. But is that all it does? No. Is that what everybody uses it for only? No, of course not. You could also say the smartphone is a cool piece of technology. It's a computer in your pocket. Just in the same way that people finish off the headless CMS story with, well, it's agile and it allows you to do so much more in the technology. Well, that is true. But again, it's only a really part of the story. It's not really giving you the full picture. So the thing about a smartphone, the thing that makes it really powerful is not necessarily the, the computer, it's actually the fact that it has a, an operating system, an application framework. It allows you to create all sorts of really cool applications that we all know and love. It has a huge amount of power that is lost when you say it's a mobile phone. So going back to headless CMS, what is its superpower? What is the thing that we are missing in this description? It's actually really simple. It's the freedom to model anything that you want without being restricted to the SQL Server database of traditional CMS. You can literally create anything as a content type in a, in a headless CMS. You can actually model anything using a schema. So you start off with an empty repository. It's got nothing in it, no fixed data structure you've got to adhere to. You literally just create a schema and then that schema can form a content type and you can model any business concept, any page, any component that you want. And that's tremendously powerful when you can take that and then deliver it through the headless CMS API. At first glance, that doesn't seem like a cool superpower until you see the abilities that come with it. And there are three core abilities that come with this modeling superpower. The first one is you can actually 
model your business with content types, with the content repository. You're not restricted to, I need to model my business as in topics and pages and content. I can actually model the concepts themselves first. For instance, if I was a fitness business, I could try and take everything I have and push it into pages and then try to make that transactional so then I'd have to have a hierarchy of a catalog. Or what I could do is model things like a fitness regime, the workouts, the diets, the supplementation, and the equipment, and make the associations across all of those concepts that make sense. And then layer a user experience on top of that that you can then start to transact on, which is a very different way of just creating static or slightly dynamic pages of content that you have to chain together with links. Especially when these types of business concepts are complex, interconnected relationships. And that brings me to the second ability. The modularity of the content types means that not only can you model business concepts and complex pieces of content, you can also create user experience components. So you can create components like navigation, you can create components that map straight into a React app or a Vue app, or even model entire application and its configuration and its roots. Not only are you modeling these user experience components, you're giving the power to the business users to actually manage the user experience without coding it into the application itself. And the third ability is the fact that everything that you produce is machine readable. Now just think about that, everything is machine readable. So you can create these content objects that can be assembled, you can then deliver these content objects through an API, and they're still machine readable, they're not HTML. And what that allows you to do is really cool things like personalization. Imagine with personalization you now can tick these blocks and be read in by the personalization engine that can then make decisions on that which means now you can dynamically assemble these blocks based on the data from the personalization engine. So you can now customize the content and the entire user experience for a specific customer. This is also true when it comes to things like search engines. The fact that it's machine readable, you can push and inject into a search index. Or any integration into any backend system, content can be pushed into their APIs and assembled within those systems. I'm sure you'll agree by reducing headless CMS to just it's an API over a CMS is only half the story. The real power is in the modeling of the content and then pushing out through that API because then you can actually generate the user experiences that you need in these heads and then manage them. Just putting an API over a CMS is not enough. You need to be able to model a business model UX, and make it contextual in every presentation that's out there, whether it's an application, a website, or injecting into an e-commerce system, or pushing it out somewhere else. I hope that gives you a much better understanding of the awesome power that you have with a headless CMS. And you understand what I mean by a superpower when it comes to headless CMS. I'm sorry, but that's all we've got time for right now. But if you could show your appreciation and scroll down a little bit, press that like button, I'd really appreciate it myself. If you are interested in hearing more about Headless, if you are interested in hearing more about Mac and Mac architectures, just subscribe to Going Headless at John or visit the channel and see some great material out there. But for now, I'd like to say thanks and goodbye.